30 years ago when I began my career as a copywriter, I wasn't well known, I got better known as time went on, but at the beginning, I almost had a vendetta against designers. The stuff I did was down and dirty, and I liked it that way, and it worked very, very well. For 30 years, I actually denigrated designers. I said design was more of an afterthought. I didn't think it was very important. And then one day last year, I listened to Lori talk to a group of people, and in five minutes, I reversed everything. And she convinced me in that five minutes that not only was design important, but it's critical, especially now as the world has changed, especially the online world. Design matters now. It blew my mind. It changed everything I thought about presenting copy online to people. And of course, that was just the aesthetics of it. When you started talking about the results you were getting, that you, with no changes in the copy whatsoever, that just design tweaks here and there would blow the roof off of results, then I got very, very interested right then. Well, John, what's happening right now, both online and in direct mail, is people are taking a bigger look at copy and design combined. It's really critical that designers like myself um, and, and marketers uh, through and through look at the integration of the design and copy together as a unit. It's so critical that they work hand in hand. It's almost like a marriage now. What, what do you say to marketers that have no clue what design means, what they don't know good design from bad design, they, they don't understand what the, what the elements that you're bringing to the table, the, why it should matter and how it matters? Well, I have to start slow sometimes with uh, <laughs> some clients, you know. Um, but well, most, what most I, people aren't trained in, in design right. at all. We live in a world where most of the design we see on TV and, and elsewhere is done for us. So right. we're told what's good. So when it's your own marketing, when it's your stuff going out there, and you're responsible for the bottom line, how people think about your, your online presentations and stuff, it, it, it matters to people. Mm -hmm. So they, they, maybe they play it too safe, maybe they just leave it in the hands of people who shouldn't be in, in charge of it. How, how do you handle right. that? Right. Well, what I like to do is show the reader um, who they're talking to. That's number one. Who's their audience? The demographics? To, kind of like the demographics. We get really down and dirty into the research First, the details. Who are we going to talk to? How old are they? Are they a man or a woman? Uh, what's their income? So therefore, we can figure out the exact words, the visuals, the colors, the type fonts that we want to use that's going to properly speak to them. So I try to work back and forth with like a new team like you're talking about mm -hmm. and uh, show them some examples of winners before and after um, and, and train them and let them into the whole vision of how critical th this whole idea is, the copy and the design and the manipulation and the uh, attention to detail to try to draw in that reader. Yeah, still, as a marketer, though, I'm not interested in design just to make it look pretty. When, as a marketer, I want results. I want, I want the moolah to start rolling in. Right. So that's what really got me excited when, when I heard you talk last mm -hmm. year. Uh, was the actual, you guys did testing, you actually, uh, you actually looked at, at before and afters and stuff, and it was, it was amazing how, how just a little bit of design tweaking can mm -hmm. radically transform a marketing campaign. Definitely. We've done head-to-head -head test where we just took the same copy, whether it's online or in direct mail, and done the proper um, fonts, you know, headlines, sizes, So visuals. when you say proper, is that you deciding what they are? Or is that you looking at the psychographics, at, at the history of design, at the history of the market that, the, that, that I'm in? Is right. it all of that or You none can of that? never design for yourself. And that's probably one of the biggest things that sets me and my agency apart from the rest. Um, just choosing for yourself, that's going to be so limited. You must get into deeply into the mind of the reader. You must choose colors. I choose colors that a man, say, for example, it's a, it's a finance product. I'm not going to pick uh, pinks and pastels. I'm going to okay. choose like rich, dark colors. So it's specifically chosen methodologies, strategies, psychological behavior. That's some of the things we start with first in our agency instead of just 
designing it point blank. It's got to be with knowledge and data and insight packed behind it. Back in the old days when I was in the advertising agency world, they would talk about design that popped off the page. And that's what got, turned me off to design because mm -hmm. I didn't want it to pop off the page. I wanted it to persuade. I wanted to sell stuff. And what blew me away with the um, designs that I've seen you do, where you've come in and just totally wrecked everything that was there before and redesigned it and built it back up, and now it's readable, it's presentable, and it sucks people in, and it, mm -hmm. and, and it does the job that advertising is supposed to do, which is not entertain and not be pleasant background, but to be the most right. exciting thing that someone reads during the day that's going to change their life, that's going to get them to act. And it's, I, I am not clear how, how you do it because I'm mm -hmm. not a, uh, an expert in design. And I think it's, it's paramount that people understand just how important design is. It, it doesn't mean somebody who's good with colors, somebody right. who, who has an eye, a flair for dressing or something. It's much, more, it's much more focused on the persuasion angle, right? Yeah, it definitely is. And uh, I will even tell you this, that Many of my designs, you would probably look at them and consider them ugly, you know. Uh, a couple of my online designs right now, they used to trend towards really uh, ornate and lavish photos at the top and a lavish headline. And, but now uh, humans are getting a little tired of that look. So just as an example, I'm using a really just tried and true eyebrow, a headline, certain details like that, mm -hmm. purely the headline and the copy is ringing true. Mm -hmm. So you really have to know what to watch for. Times change. You can't just keep doing the same thing again and again. You must be on the pinpoint at all times of what's going on back there. You must know the trends and follow it. Okay, do you understand the, the psychology of reading good marketing about where eye flow goes and, and, and how 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 I might lo approach a page with a lot of stuff on their photos, headlines, some copy, maybe some stuff in a sidebar. Do you do you understand how people read that stuff? Yes. Um, in online, and this is one of the biggest problems out there right now. Online is so critical because the the human or the person they're sitting up straight if they're looking at a monitor mm -hmm. like. Uh, this posture is so critical there. So we want to make sure that their eye hits the headline, for example. Six inches down, boom, there's got to be a visual or bullets, some yellow highlighting. You have to keep pulling them down, 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 so mm -hmm. they get to that meat and potatoes, and they hear what your offer is, they understand your product, and they want it. So for online, that's kind of what I force them to do. You with the copy have the ability to do that with the words and the subheads, but then in conjunction with the design, together as a team, again, that's what will give us that winning edge. But a lot of people, then when they take that winning design and they want to put it on print, for example, in an eight and a half by 11 or something, they're just splashing it again in the same respect there. They're not having an eye for detail. So whatever you touch, you have to be mindful of how the reader will see it. Is it going to be on a teeny tiny phone mm -hmm. and it's going to be little teeny photos and you, you really have to be mindful. So you can't just you know, try whatever you want, you have to be knowledgeable, you have to be an expert, you have to have years behind you in understanding this so intricately. That's great. Uh, when I was uh, back in the early days of my career, there was a, a, a battle going on between designers and writers. Uh, some of the first designers I, I worked with uh, before I got them fired, would talk about <laughs> would talk about the elegance of the design and little gray floating box of copy that goes here, and they wanted mm. me to edit my copy. You have the totally op opposite approach. You you can make you, I've heard you make suggestions about copy, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's based on how how the persuasion angle happens, and and uh, copywriters do not resent you um, uh, uh. suggesting changes. They actually, it's a very uh, it's a very cooperative effort. It truly is, and um, when I pair up with a copywriter and you know the marketer or the client behind the whole project, I really demand that intimacy together, that relationship, 
That's what makes you that moving, smooth team. You build this trust, just like you would with any relationship that mm -hmm. you're in, and they feel compelled to easily say, you know, that red's not bright enough, Lori, or let's see how we can make this snap. And I'll say something like, I really think that in between these 12 inches, we really need another subhead. I'm thinking of this topic. So it's that integration and that joining of, you know, together of your two talents, that's where it'll shine. That's where the smashing, you know, uh, wonderful winnings in the end will come, not from that, like, it sounds like you're talking a little bit about headbutting. So the, the joining of copy and design is just really so important. Great, so, so the idea of a marketer spending a lot of money on his copy to make sure that he's getting his message across and then mm -hmm. burying it in bad design or an ill thought out design uh, is hurting you. It, it may even still be working. In fact, what, one of the things that really got me when, when I heard you talking was about how you took winning pieces and just made them even more of a winner mm -hmm. with just tweaks in the design, just to make it easier for it for the uh, uh, for the prospect to read. Uh, let the let the copy shine. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of copywriters with no design experience don't have other than the headline's got to be bigger than the body copy, they, and they throw in some bold and and. They, uh, in, in italic, they don't really have any other ideas other than that. Right. And I've seen you take pieces of copy and go, no, this needs to be blown up. And, and you're paying mm -hmm. attention to the stuff. It's not coming from the outside and making it pretty. You're actually making it, you know, blow off the page, really. Right. Well, you know, the reason behind that is because instead of just kind of glancing at the copy, some of these pages that we design are like 50 or 60 pages of copy. Exactly. I demand at my agency, we all read that copy three times. We read it once just to understand, you know, the basic thrust of the copy. We circle areas in the printout where it's cold or warm, it's really touching you, or hot points. Uh, we look at words that are really too um, difficult for this reader, maybe somebody has joint pain, they can't understand this particular word or it'll stop them. So that's the first read, then we read it as the reader. I become the reader with a prostate issue or the gentleman that wants to that's a nice uh, trick. gain, uh, yeah, <laughs> well that is pretty <clears throat> tricky for me to do, but uh, I do my best. Uh, maybe somebody with a, a loved one with memory problems or an investor that wants to gain access to more money for uh, their retirement. So I know that reader, I know how he feels, I know his fears, concerns. So that's all that background base that we've been studying. Then we read this copy and we read it in the eyes and the shoes of the reader. So then once you get to that design, it is simple because you know those hot points, where you need a visual, where you need a new subhead, where they're gonna start unsticking. You wanna keep them sticking onto the copy. I must make them grab on and go down the sales page or continue to turn in the brochure. So again, together, um, hand in hand, we go. As, as a writer who, <clears throat> I used to literally get in fist fights with people who tried to change my copy. I, I am flattered by someone like you who, who gets into it and reads the copy in exactly the way you described it. You read it both as, as from the marketer's standpoint, from the designer's standpoint, and from the reader's standpoint. Mm -hmm. And to have that kind of proofing essentially behind it just makes it much more powerful. Any writer is not going to complain about that kind of approach to his copy because we want it to work. We, that's where we make the big money is when the stuff works and the royalties come in. Yeah, well, you know what I find is after we've had a successful kind of relationship together, you know, you've turned in your copy, I've done the design, we've worked together, and then those uh, statistics come back. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes in the beginning, the client will be a little skeptical or they're not sure about the writer's idea or the direction we go. And uh, luckily, like, I'm not used to losing at all. Um, I only go for a win, and uh, I love seeing those emails and hearing their voices on the other end of the line, like, again, you know, it's like a winner, it's a landslide, we want to roll it out, it's a control, and uh, this is my passion, this is uh, what my whole career was based on, and I take this all very seriously, and, uh, you know, I'm going to continue helping as many people out there as I can. 
So let's say I'm watching this and I'm a marketer and it's uh, little light bulbs going off and it's like, mm -hmm. I want my stuff to look good and I want to have better results and I want, I want my copywriters to be happy and my marketing just zoom along and mm -hmm. crush the competition and you know, push me right. up to the top of the niche. What, what do I do next? Well, you stand in line. <laughs> uh, you can get in touch with me at, uh, at my website. It's uh, lauriehaller.com. That makes it pretty easy. And I have some samples up there. And, uh, you know, my email is lori, L O R I, at lauriehaller.com. And I'd love to talk with you.